Well, good morning, Renaissance. We are so happy to see you on this beautiful November Sunday. And if you're online, welcome. Would you please join us as we stand and worship our King?
You know, 2020 has been full of challenges for me personally, whether it's physical, emotional, financial, professional, we've had our fair share of challenges. And I was reminded this week by a dear sweet friend that God's not finished with my story. And God's not finished with your story either. Because no matter what challenges we face, if we build our life on Christ as the solid rock of our lives, He will provide more than we could ever, ever need. So let's sing this together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one.
church we learned this song last week so it should be familiar to you so let's get moving again and sing out with me and I search the world but it couldn't fill me a man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough that you came along Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Oh, it's here in your love Sing it out with me Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the 
sing it. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Father, we come to you today and we thank you. You're the only one for us, Lord God, and we thank you for that reminder as we are all here today, anxious to hear your word. Lord God, I pray that you just open our minds, open our hearts to what Pastor Josh will be bringing to us today, and that we may take that with us into the week ahead of us. We pray all these things, Lord God, in your heavenly name, amen. You may be seated. My name is Laramie, and I'm the creative director here at Wren. And before we move forward, I've got some things that you guys should know about. So that's why I'm here, is to tell you about the things you should know about. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is if you are a kid and you are grades third, fourth, fifth grade, it's your time. Go to your class. Head back there. They're waving at you. Um, they're going to take you to your class. You guys are going to have a ton of fun, I'm sure. Um, I know the video said it, but I'm going to say it again. If this is your first time here, we really do want to meet you. Um, every week we have people who join us for the first time. Sometimes that's online. Sometimes it's here in the room. And if that's you, don't sneak out. After the service, that door is going to raise, and right out to your left you'll see me and a whole bunch of other staff members. We want to meet you, put a face to your name, and give you a gift just to thank you for spending your day with us. And if you're not new, then why aren't you serving by now? <laughs> no, maybe the next step for you is for you to get involved in a team. And I only say that because that's how I got involved. Um, and it's one of my favorite things about being at Wren is being on my team and knowing that I have a team um, base that pr um, protects me and supports me. And if I have a hard day, I go to them and they always are there. I'm like looking at Randy. He's always there to help me. Um, and I want that for you. Um, so after the service, come talk talk to me. Let's get to know about what makes you you, the passions that you have, and let's get you put on a team that makes sense for you. Okay, next thing, get out your phones and get your calendar. There's some things that you need to put in there. The first thing is that the last Sunday 
in November, November 29th, we're going to be having an online-only gathering. That means we're not going to be meeting in person. Um, you can stream it live at 9 a.m. at rendicator.online.church, or after it streams live, it'll be available for on-demand. And the reason that we're doing that is for the next calendar thing, which is December 6th, it's Christmas. So we've got our Christmas series coming up. It's going to be three weeks long. Jeff's been working on it. I'm really excited about it. Um, so invite your friends to either join you here or give them the live stream link. That starts on December 6th. Um, another thing, I'm looking at my thing. What else do I have? Giving. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for giving with us. Um, it's been pretty awesome to feel so supported um, during this whole time and to know that um, you guys are really helping and giving with us and partnering with us um, to make Renaissance run. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, if you want to give in person, there are giving boxes located around the building, or you can give online, um, or you can text to give, which is what I do. It's really easy. I just send a number, and Renaissance takes care of the rest. Um, so I want to pray real quick, and then we will invite our associate pastor to the stage. Please pray with me. God, we are so grateful that you are bigger than we are. We're so grateful that there are things that only you can do, that we don't have to shoulder the burden of um, how are we going to get through next week, how are we going to get through next month, is my job still going to be there? Um, God, those are things that we worry about, but you are bigger than us, and we're grateful that we have someone who's bigger than us and that we don't have to have it all figured out. So God, I'm grateful um, that you're supporting everyone in this room and that you've continued to support Renaissance as well. Amen. Okay, so please put your hands together for Josh Wynn, our associate pastor. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? Oh, come on. Woo! There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, we've been, uh, I'm just going to jump right in because the clock is ticking. I've got a lot to say today, so I hope you're excited. I'm going to get to the end, and there's going to be a, a list of about eight things that I'm going to share with you. So for those type A people, don't get upset when I get to point three and I keep going, right? So there's going to be a list at the end that you can take notes and get going. But let's, let's recap a little bit. Is it, is it okay if I jump right in? All right, all right. Because I, I, I got a funny story I could tell, but we'll, we'll, we'll just get, get going. I got married. Well, I didn't get married yesterday. I married somebody yesterday. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, one of our very own. Shout out. They said, they, they said they'd be listening to the live stream on the way. And I was like, if you're doing that, <clears throat> you're probably doing it wrong. Um, it's probably not the thing you want to be doing the day after you get married is listening to the live stream. Watch it later. It's going to be posted, right? So see Joe and Megan say, take your time. Like you don't, you don't have to be with us at nine in the morning. But if you are, hi, guys. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're in the book of Joshua, right? And we've been, uh, we've been looking at uh, the children of Israel uh, to, to recap. They've, they've, they've come out of Egypt, come out of bondage, and then they were wandering in the wilderness because of their disobedience for 40 years. And that generation was going to die in that wilderness. So this is that, that next generation. And these are the sons and daughters of, of the, those people, that generation. And and the, the thing about the generation before them is God delivers them by his miraculous hands, signs, wonders, miracles, right? And they come out and he parts the Red Sea. And they go through and he, he leads them by cloud by day, fire by night. There's manna, literally, which is with our food falling on the ground. How much faith does it take to follow a cloud? How much faith does it take to go out and pick up food that's falling from the sky? How much faith does it take to drink water from a rock that's been provided for you, right? Not a, not a whole lot of faith, right? So God is baby stepping this, this generation of, of complainers that, that would end up dying and wandering in the wilderness. But this generation, we learned a couple weeks ago that the manna stopped, right? And we don't hear about the cloud anymore. And then we get to Jericho, and here's this walled city. And God begins to give them instructions on how they're going to battle. And so that's what I want to look at today is how, how do we battle uh, and learn to walk by faith? Because God does. He's in 
the supernatural and in, in the wonder working and the, in the miracle working. But how do we walk by faith? You know, I, I think th- there's uh, been several who, if God would just show himself, I would believe in him. Right? I even, even had one guy as bold to say, God would strike me dead, then I would know he's real. All right, let's slow down. Think about that one for a second. Uh, and, and I don't know that that's how God would respond to you anyway, because it said that he's not slack or slow concerning his promises, but he's patient because he wants everyone to be saved. So I'm not sure that God's mode of operandi is going to be to strike you dead. But if God would show up, right, I would believe in him. Uh, we can read from scripture. It's, it's coming. <laughs> I can, I can do that one too. Uh, is, that, is that chapter six? Let's, let's start in verse one. <laughs> That's so awesome. But those who would believe by faith, having not Jesus would even say, there's going to be those after you that are going to believe by faith, right? And so here's this generation that is going to begin to walk and battle by faith. So let's, let's pick it up in verse one. Chapter 6. Is it okay if I read it? All right. <laughs> For those at home, the phone went off and, and the, uh, it began reading in a, in a way better reading voice than mine, but I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. So now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went in and none went out. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and its mighty men of valor. Let's pause there for a second. This is that prophetic, perfect tense in Hebrew. As if it had already happened. See, I have given. So this is a continuation of, of what Pastor Jeff spoke on last week. There's a couple of verses where this commander of the Lord's army shows up. We believe it to be a Christophany, Jesus showing up in the Old Testament, pre-incarnate Jesus, before he would put skin on, right? Before we're about to celebrate the baby being born in the manger. Before that, he shows up several times in the Old Testament. We believe this to be one of them shows up with the sword drawn, and Joshua says, are you for us or are you against us? Are you for us or are you for our adversaries? And Jesus would say to him, no, right? Neither. I'm not for you and I'm not for your adversaries. I am the commander of the Lord's army. So we would learn last week that it is not asking God to join in our plan, but it's saying, God, where are you moving? Where are you working? What are you doing? And how can I get on board? How can I get involved in what you're doing? So here is that continuation of that, that conversation. And here is Jesus saying to him, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. Now, Joshua would look up from that conversation and he could see Jericho still there. Walls up, walled city, impenetrable. See, I have given Jericho into your hand. This is that prophetic, perfect tense that it's already been done. Verse three, let's continue on. You shall march around the city, all the men of war, going around the city once. This you shall do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. Now, this isn't like a normal battle plan. Joshua has done some battle, right? And he's kind of nor- used to like swords, chariots, you know, so things, things like that. What's, what's going on with this uh, uh, trumpets? Okay, we're going to take the trumpets of, of ram's horn. This was a shofar. And these weren't, these weren't used for battle. These were ceremonial, sacred horns that were used to celebrate the year of Jubilee. They were used to celebrate these religious festivals. And so th- think about this. What they were playing continually as they marched around the city and they played those trumpets. They're playing the sound of freedom. The year of Jubilee is all their debts canceled. Right, and it is, it's this celebration of freedom. And so as they're marching around the city, they're hearing the sound of worship. They're hearing the sound of freedom. They're hearing the, that sacred sound of those ram's horns. I know some of us uh, were fortunate enough to be in marching band when we were growing up, anybody? Am I the only, okay, I heard, heard a few, woo. So I was, I was from a school where you had no choice. If you were in band, you were in marching band. Yay. And uh, so, but 
you, you hear those, those songs, right? The fight song. You can probably start humming it now. The school you went to, the school you were part of, right? You can start, and you hear that drum cadence, like, and come on, anybody else? Like, you hear, you go to football games, and you get amped, right? Because you got the, the cadence of those drums going, and you know it, and it's familiar to you, and you might be 40-some years old, and it's still, mm, oh, yeah, still gets something boiling in you, Right? It's homecoming, it's whatever. And uh, the church that we were at in, in, in Texas, they would have this big kind of uh, kickoff in the fall and it was football themed and they would have this drum line come. And, and I remember these two ladies standing out there and they were, they were you know, 20 years removed from high school and the, the drum cadence came on from their, it was their school's fight song. And they're, you know, dancing and they're like, oh, you, you went to the high, the high school too? Oh, come, come on. And, they, and they're just, it's that familiar sound. So think about this is they're, they're going around the city playing that familiar sound of freedom, playing that familiar sound of worship, right? It's, it's kind of, kind of what that would elicit in them, in their emotions and in their feelings. And this was the, oh, wait, that's that, that's that trumpet. That's that ram's horn. That's that. That's that sound of jubilee. That's that sound of freedom. That's that sound of worship. Verse four, on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. Come on. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant and let the seven priests bear the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Ark of the Lord. See, when we face our, our, our Jericho, right, our problems, our obstacles, God is teaching not only them how to fight, but we can learn a lot from this too. He's teaching them how to battle, right? That we would surround our problems, surround our Jericho, surround our obstacle with the sound of freedom. That we would surround it with the sound of worship, that we would surround it with the presence of God, right? This isn't a normal battle strategy. In fact, it's pretty darn ridiculous if you think about it. You want me to march around an impenetrable city with some horns from a ram. I don't even know how they found out those made noise, but I'm sorry to be the first ram. <laughs> Verse seven. Oh, see, this, this is actually my wife's voice. Sometimes it's the Holy Spirit. A lot of times it's my wife's voice that I hear in my head. Keep going. Don't stop there. Don't say what you're thinking. So verse seven, he said to the people, go forward, march around the city and let the armed men pass before the ark of the Lord. Just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priest who were blowing the trumpets and the rear guard was walking after the ark while the trumpets blew continually. So this was news to me. I remember this story, this very familiar story when you get so used to it. And I just thought the only time they blew the horn was at the end and they shouted, right? This is, this is the most annoying march ever. Right? They're playing the horns continually. Nobody's heard the trumpet before, I guess. Anyway. But again, it's that sound of freedom. It's that sound of worship. It's the, the ceremonial sound that they, they would be used to. Verse 10, but Joshua commanded people, you shall not shout or make your voice heard. Neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. See, this is the opposite of what their parents did in the wilderness as they wandered. This is the opposite of what I often do when I face obstacles or problems and I begin to complain and I begin to murmur and I begin to doubt and I begin to talk about my fears and my insecurities. Anybody else? Right, we begin to do, do those things. That was that previous generation and Joshua was saying, listen, shut it. When you walk around, I don't wanna hear a word come out of your mouth. We're not going to say anything. All we're going to hear is the sound of freedom. All we're going to hear is the sound of worship. And we're going to surround it with the presence of God. And you and your complaining and your doubts and your fears are going to be silent. Joshua, one of the 12 spies that went in a generation before, right? One of the two that's left, Joshua and Caleb, 
Two spies that come back with a great report. Listen, God said we could take this land. We can take it. Are there giants? Yep. Is it going to be difficult? Yep. Is there going to be a battle? You bet. And my God can handle it. But there were 10 spies that came back and said, ooh. And they start talking about their doubts, their fears, their insecurities. Those guys are like giants. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can do it. And they convinced the people of Israel that they couldn't move in, that, that God couldn't help them, that God couldn't battle for them. And because of that, because of their doubt and their complaining and their fears and their insecurities, they, they were going to wander for 40 years and they were going to die in that wilderness. So here's Joshua. Not going to happen again. Not on my watch. You're not going to say a word. I knew your dad. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I knew, I knew your dad. Like, you're not going to say a word. Shut it. No doubts, no fears, no complaining, no insecurities. All we're going to hear is that sound of freedom, that sound of worship with the presence of God surrounding the city. Because our words have power. Our words really do matter. And if all we focus on and all we fix our attention on are our doubts and our fears, we'll find that when it comes time to shout, we don't have a voice left. When it comes time to shout, We've got so much doubt that our shout sounds like, hee. And we don't believe that God can do it. And that's what happened to the, the previous generation. So Joshua's like, no, not this time. It allows us when we're, when we're silent and surrounding it with worship in the presence of God, it allows us to focus on the promise, right, and not the problem. Verse 11, so we caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going around it once, and they came into the camp, and they spent the night. Listen, this was not a long walk. In uh, doing the, the research for this, this was about, at most, a 12-acre walk. The, the city enc encompassed about 12 acres, and you can go to Jericho today, and you can see it. And so this, this walk, you know, they could do, in fact, on the seventh day, they could do it seven times, and, and they still have time to collect all the gold and burn the city and all that stuff. So this was not a long journey. It took, probably could be done in less than an hour, right? So they're going around the city, and then they come back to the camp, and they camp for the night. So guess what? It was a part of the battle plan for Joshua to rest, that rest was important. And that guess what can rob you of, of that peace and that rest, the complaining and the murmuring and your doubts and your fears, that, that's the, the stuff that robs you of your peace. That's the stuff that robs you of your rest. And when you're trusting that God has got this, when you're trusting that God is able and God is capable of doing the incapable, then you're able to have this peace. The Bible calls it a peace that passes understanding. It means a peace that doesn't make sense. Facing what you're facing, it doesn't make sense that you can rest in this moment. Facing what, you, what is in front of you, it doesn't make sense that you can have a peace, even when there's uncertainty. So Jericho, after the first day, was still standing. After the second day, was still standing. After the third day, not a stone was shaken. And yet they were able to come back and rest, knowing that the problem was still there. I don't know what you're facing right now, financial, physical, spiritual, emotional, with your loved ones, but I can tell you that even though the problem is still there, God wants to give you rest when you are able to put it into God's hands, and he's able to teach you how to battle by walking by faith. He's teaching you how to face our problems and face every obstacle and still find peace in the midst of it. Verse 12, then Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord walked on and they blew the trumpets continually and the armed men were walking before them and the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord while the trumpets blew. So fun fact, I said I was in marching band. Uh, I was a trumpet player and uh, my, my dad worked shift work, which was awesome. Uh, swing shift, so he was on like a different shift every week. 
so the fact that I play trumpet was amazing, uh, and, and he loved it so much, right? But remember what they're hearing as the, the trumpets played continually was that, that sound of freedom, that sound of worship. So many people want to take the supernatural out of, out of what God is doing. They want to explain it away. Listen, it doesn't matter how many trumpets you had. It doesn't matter how loud you blew them. Those walls are not tumbling down with the sound of a trumpet. Right? The, the Jericho is not going to be defeated because you're walking around it seven days in a row. And I found that people actually did the research. Common sense wasn't enough. So they wanted to see if we had seven trumpets of ram's horns, seven shofars, and we blew them, could it move solid matter, right? And there, they, there had to have been money spent on this. I'm like, and time. And yes, guess what? It didn't move. <laughs> no, no solid matter was shaken by blowing those trumpets. We try to, 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 to explain the, the things of God. How, how, did they, how did they cross the sea on dry land? Right? Well, it must have been this, this thing that happened, and, and it was natural. And they, well, we found that there's, there was, there's fault lines nearby Jericho. And, and so they, they try to explain all the, the supernatural out of the stories in Scripture that we, we see God moving in a supernatural way. Listen, what we get to figure out and understand is God is the one who is doing the heavy lifting and what he trusts us with is just our obedience that we would obey and that we would have faith that he is able when it doesn't seem like he's able he's able when it doesn't seem like it can happen in our power walking around with trumpets is not going to move a stone in that wall and they've, they've done excavations of Jericho. You can go there today. And, and throughout the last century, they've done several excavations of the city. And you can you, they, and they actually see that there was a, a wall that fell down. And then after the wall fell down, there was a fire. So they can tell that the wall fell down first, and then there was a fire that burned the city. And what's interesting is they found jars, clay jars full of grain. And we know because of the time that the Israelites were there, they just celebrated Passover. So this is the spring, and this is the time of harvest for them. So their, their jars would be full of grain, and they, wall, after the walls, the biblical account is, after the walls fell down, they burned the city, and they didn't take anything with them. So they wouldn't have taken the grain with them. Because they were told not to. They were told it was, it was cursed. They were told not to take it. So here, here is even uh, archaeological evidence that Something happened here, and it was out of the ordinary, it was supernatural. It, w- it wasn't out of the ordinary to starve out a city, right? If it was a walled city, they would camp about it, and they would just starve them out. Like, how long do we have to wait? A couple months? How long do they, this is harvest time, so it was going to be a really long time. Sometimes it was years to starve out a city that was walled. But this, they had full jars. The jars were full of grain, so that, even the archaeologists were like, this conquest happened in a quick amount of time. I don't know, seven days? <laughs> so God, does, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't require our assistance, right? He didn't need the, the trumpets. He didn't need the walking around the city. He, he didn't need them at all. And there's so many times in our lives where the only thing he needs from us is our obedience and our faith. Right? That's what we battle with. That's what we, and it doesn't make, listen, I know, I get it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Faith, obedience, having peace, facing trials, facing problems, facing obstacles. And our weapons are obedience and faith. Listen, it doesn't make sense that they could walk around a city with, with trumpets and see the walls fall down. Verse 14, and the second day they marched around the city once, and then they returned into the camp. So they did this for six days. You've heard of uh, couch to 5K, right? <laughs> so first day they go around once, second day they go around once. <laughs> Our staff just went through 
uh, something similar, learn to run. And uh, just um, Thursday, they completed their 30-minute run. I say they because I, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but I sent my wife in my place. So it still counts. I still get points for it, right? Uh, and, and she did it. Like the first day, the first run is like two minutes, right? And then the last one is 30 minutes straight. And after a number, I don't know because I didn't do it, a number of weeks, I think 10 weeks or, or whatever it was. So they, they learned to run. And this is God continually showing them obedience, showing them how to battle, how to, how to walk by faith, how to obey. And they would learn in the process to surround their problems, surround their obstacle with worship and include the presence of God. This is God teaching them how to circle well, because guess who didn't circle well? Guess who didn't wander well? Right, the previous generation, their parents. What should have been a seven-day journey took 40 years. Right? They, didn't, they didn't wander well. They didn't wander. They, they, didn't, they didn't process the way that this generation is going to process. They didn't, and, and they're going to make mistakes. We're going to, we make mistakes. But God is teaching them to walk in obedience and faith. So what I want to encourage you is to, when your, your problem, your obstacle is not moving, don't get to discouraged. Day one, you get done with your walk and the worship, and you brought the presence of God, and you brought some friends along with you, and the problem's still there. The walls are still standing. I don't want you to get embarrassed. I'm believing God, and nothing's moving, nothing's changing. I don't, I, what, what I don't want you to do is be fooled by what you don't see. see. Most of us haven't done any plane traveling <laughs> in the recent months. But when, when you, when you, have you ever taken a trip on a plane and you get to your destination and they begin to circle? And you look around and you see, and maybe, maybe it's you, maybe you, you, you get frustrated. You're like, I can't believe this. They're just gonna circle around again. I can see the land, you know, we can see this. Right, we're at our destination and they come on, on the calm. We're going we're gonna to circle again. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's another 20 minutes. And you see people getting frustrated. Like the pilot is just circling for fun. Like he's like, you know what? This four-hour flight wasn't enough. I want to go around again. Right? Like, <laughs> and so these people are, are getting frustrated. And, and maybe you're getting frustrated that you're circling. And you're like, wait a minute. There's stuff you don't see. There's a storm that you can't fly through. So you need a circle above it. There's an accident that's happened on the tarmac. You, you can't land right now. Right? There's traffic. If you were trying to land right now, there'd be a collision in the air. There's things that are moving that you can't see. That's beyond your knowledge. So I'm telling you, don't be fooled. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be frustrated. When your problem is still standing, the walls are still there. They haven't moved. And you're like, God, I'm obeying God, I'm, I'm having faith. God, I'm doing my best not to complain. But my Jericho's still there. God is moving on your behalf because he loves you intently. He is working and he's moving behind the scenes. And there's things moving and shifting that you don't see. And God may be saying, it's not safe to land. God, I want to, we're here. I want to land. God, the problem, I want you to fix it. It's not safe. So don't be discouraged, don't be embarrassed, don't be fooled by things that you don't see because God has got that perspective that we don't have and his promises are true. So the loved one, that it, the child that hasn't come back to the Lord, right? the job that hasn't come through, the sickness that isn't healed, don't be frustrated and fooled and discouraged and embarrassed. Continue to obey, continue to, to walk by faith, continue to believe that the God who has you in the palm of his hand and loves you with an incredible love is for you. Verse 15, on the seventh day they rose early at dawn and they marched around the city in the same manner seven times. And it was on that day that they marched around seven times. And at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, all right, time to make some noise, right? They shout, the Lord has given you the city. Jumping down to verse 20. So the people shouted 
and the trumpets were blown. And as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. See, God doesn't battle the same way every, every time. He never again circled a city seven times. He never again told him to, to blow trumpets so the walls would fall down. Right? We, we would see Jesus would, would use the same thing. He never healed the same people or the people the same way twice. You see one, one blind man, he, he touches his eyes and they're healed. Another blind man, <laughs> spits into the dirt, makes mud, smears it in the guy's eyes, and then tells the blind guy to go find a, a pool that I'm going to tell a specific one and go wash. I, he never does it, because what would we do? We'd make a formula. And then we've taken faith out of it. We've taken obedience out of it because we've formulated God's plan and God's mode of operation. And God wants us to learn how to battle by faith and obedience. So what we find in Hebrews 11, that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, right? It's the conviction of things not seen. In, in uh, ver- that, uh, Hebrews 11 is called that faith chapter. And, and I think it's the sixth verse. It says, it's impossible to please God without faith. So we believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And we'd find this story in Hebrews 11, verse 30, that by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. So he's teaching them how to battle by faith as the people encircled it seven days. It was by faith. It doesn't take faith to follow a cloud. It doesn't take faith to eat the manna, to drink from the rock. But it takes faith to walk around a city and blow trumpets and expect the walls to come a-tumbling down. So here's the eight things I'm going to fly because I've got 14 seconds. Number one, don't go alone. Don't go alone. Make sure that you're taking people with you. Make sure that you're, you find some trumpet players to worship with you and sound that sound of freedom. Make sure you, you are bringing the presence of God to the battle. Don't go alone. Number two, find rest even when you know you're getting up the next day and the problem might still be standing. Find that peace that passes all understanding. Trust that your God is able. Number three, know that God does the heavy lifting but he chooses to partner with us, right? He partners with our faith and our obedience, but he does the work. He does the heavy lifting. He would, Jesus would say to us, cast your burdens, cast your cares. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. He'd say, don't, don't worry, don't be anxious, but with prayer and supplication, make your requests known. God does the heavy lifting. Number four, bring the presence of God to your battle. If you're like me, sometimes the last thing you remember to do is, oh, we should pray about this. Let that be the first thing you do, bring in the presence of God to your battle. Number five, make sure you're surrounding your Jericho, your problem, your obstacle, your loved one with praise and worship, right? Let it drown out your doubt. Let it drown out your complaining, your fears. Something my wife still does to this day and my kids, if someone is saying something I don't want to hear, you stick your fingers in your ears. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Right? Drown out. Like maybe your worship should sound a little better than that. But drown out those doubts and fears. Don't listen to it. Because you're too busy sounding that sound of freedom, sounding that sound of worship. Number six, obey even when you don't see a way. And it doesn't make sense. Number seven, learn to see with prophetic eyes that the commander of the Lord's army would see, see I have given, that you would learn to see with those spiritual eyes that say, the problem's still standing there. It just doesn't know it's defeated yet. That wall's still up. It just doesn't know it's coming down in seven days, right? My problem is still there. It just doesn't know that my God is bigger. And finally, number eight, believe that God is bigger. Believe that God is bigger than your problem. Believe that God is bigger, that he's able, and he's capable.
Let's pray. God, we want to acknowledge, like we did last week, that you are the commander. You're the chief. You're the king. You're in control. God, and that you are, are more than able, more than capable of, of taking down the wall, taking down our problem, our obstacle, our issues, bringing our loved one back to you. God, our, our job is obedience and faith. God, I pray that we would believe that you are great and that you're able and that you're capable. God, and that we would submit these things into your hands, God, and we would find ourselves surrounding our problems with praise and worship and bringing, inviting you in the presence of God to our, our situations. God, I'm believing that you're big enough to take the walls down. Even when it doesn't make sense how you're doing it, we don't need to understand. We just need to rest in knowing that you're able. In Jesus' name, amen. you let's just let's just sing this to him this morning I'm caught up in your presence I just wanna sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy Never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. Open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. And open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your prayer. wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. Never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe Sing that to him this morning. I just want you. I just want you. And nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. 
nothing else will do. I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I never thought I would be convicted by the Battle of Jericho. Growing up in church, and, you know, Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, it never occurred to me that it's a reminder of the steadfast love and strength that God provides us. And I don't know, for a lot of you, the last few weeks have been pretty anxiety ridden, very stressful. And today reminded me that we need to look to our leader surround our anxieties and our fears with praise and worship and look to our Lord for guidance. So we're going to sing this again. We're just going to sing, I'm caught up in your presence and just sit in his presence this morning. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feast. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. We thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you that we can invite your presence into our situations. We can surround our problems, our Jerichos with worship. And then you don't want us to go alone. We have each other. You call this church, you call it a body, your body, the body of Christ, that we're all members. You don't want us to do anything alone, but you've created us each to lean on each other. And I just want to challenge you this morning if there is a Jericho or problem of faith that you're facing, if there's a loved one that you've been praying for and you haven't seen any change, you've been around it six, seven times, you're on day seven and you're, you're on trip five and the wall hasn't moved, right? If it's a job, if it's a financial situation, if it's you know, whatever it would be, we have people here in a few moments that, that want to agree with you. You don't have to go alone. We want to pray with you. We want to learn this all together, how to fight, how to battle the way God wants us to battle, where he does the heavy lifting. And we can actually find rest and peace knowing that he's able and he's capable and he got us right in the palm of his hand. So I'm going to speak a blessing over you, and then we're going to be dismissed. But if, if you need somebody to stay here and pray with you, we're going to be here as long as we need to be. Lord, I pray you would bless us and keep us and make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us and give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.